Geniuses, like, they want to guarantee themselves at least two OP champions. Remember, we do have Zac open, which Wicked's been playing quite a mm -hmm. bit of. We have uh, Soas, who can play him as well in the top lane. It's only time to tell and, exactly and what they're going to play. I want to talk about the ban strategies, because I've actually been discussing with the, this with the teams, and, you know, that we've obviously been... Right, right, right. They've always been having the discussions about maybe wanting another ban in there, but the current strategy is you either... You basically let three... OP champions, what what people yeah, consider yeah. OP champions, and they that's probably what they've done here. They maybe snuck it through, but like I countered with them. I was like, well, what do you consider OP? Because then they listed the champion officers. Well, that's completely different to Korea. That's completely different to North America. So we're talking about a worldwide game here. Where do we draw the line? Who's right? Who's wrong? I think no one's wrong in that situation. Exactly. It just so, depends on region, what's really yeah. popular and how the beta's currently going. And currently, Twisted Fate is very popular, and we do see Peke, the backdoor master on Twisted Fate, ladies and gentlemen. Best tell your friends of that one, because also it's looking like Crepo is going to be able to get his grubby little hands on that thrash, and he's <laughs> going to be very happy. Will we see Zack coming out? As you mentioned, Wicked has been playing him quite a lot. Or will they maybe look to counter Twisted Fight early on? Well, I can tell you this. Wicked is happy Malphite's banned, so he doesn't have to play that champion because well, he's been very vocal about not liking playing that champion. Surely a very good counter right now would be would be Cassidy against Twisted Fate. It, it depends. Teleport Cassidy maybe even as well. well Charlie's not playing. Calm down. <laughs> calm down. We're not, we're not, we'll we're see what Frog does. Yeah. And honestly, because obviously he played Cassidy yesterday. Uh, ironically, he's banned out this time, but by them, he's not happy on Cassidy. So... There was discussions between Oslo and Frog and at dinner last night, and he was basically saying, you know, you should just play what you're comfortable on, play what you're happy on. Maybe that's also what Snoopy's doing right now, because he's selected Nautilus. That's a champion he's kind of falling back on that he found very strong early on. Yeah, it's 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 kind of at the point where the, the really experienced teams have been together for so long, kind of get into a rut, and they're like, how can we get mm -hmm. out of this? And sometimes it's due to maybe they haven't enjoyed the game as much lately, so they need to play some champions they really enjoy. It's just finding your way out of that, and it's really hard for some teams to do that, which we might even argue that Evil Geniuses has been having that problem with since Spring Split started, you know, where they placed number three in the World Finals. So we'll see what's going to happen here. And I, I don't really expect a casting to come out for Evil Geniuses just yet. I mean, there's no point to pick it right away, even though you know, you know obviviously, the, the opponent's mid laner, mm -hmm. but you have to have a certain composition for casting to work. Oh, yeah, I'm going to see Janna possibly coming out once again for Unrated. And in fact, now I come to think of it, the two games that Fnatic won, I believe he played Janna. He has played Janna quite a bit, actually. And he's been playing a one. strong Janna. Mm. I can't. I can't tell you the top of my head. Couldn't if it tell was you the John top of my game. head, but yeah. Cyanide on Javan is definitely a strong pick. It's a champion that he's been renowned for many, many times, and it does look like he's going to get that one in there. See if he can outsmite and out steal on Snoopy. There's Frogan baiting the crowd. Will he go Anivia? See, this this is another interesting thing because you know the fact that we're having the chat with Ocelot, and he was like. The champions that you ban, there's right, certain right. people... The OPs. No, the OPs is that yeah. certain champions are not overpowered, but like, why would unless you give it to Frogan? Yeah. yeah, unless there's a player in there, why would you give it to him? Which, actually, some of the teams have figured out ways around. Because yeah. you think at Lemon Dogs, they allowed him to have an Iviad last week at DreamHack. Managed to get the win. Yeah, it's it's just about strategies and, and executing them. Like, you, if you can guess what the other team's going to play, which Arne, he's been actually very vocal about that uh, against their game... Uh, earlier on today against Gambit, he had every single pick of theirs picked, uh, like already written down. Like he knew what they were going to play. Yeah. And you can kind of work a strategy out around that. Whether or not it actually works and you can implement it in game is a different story, but it does give you somewhere to start. But and, and actually, when you think about it, Alex, you said the exact same thing. He said, we knew exactly what yeah. they were going to play, what they were going to pick as soon as we did our picks, which is. It's all mind yeah, games going then, on there. It, oh, you get that really headache mind games like, they're going to pick this, and so they gonna know I'm going to pick this, and then <laughs> they are going to pick something else, but what if I know they're going to pick that, and then my head explodes after that one, so I didn't go any further. But we do see Vayne being set on for Yellow Star, but over on Evil Genius' side, Zack was picked up, so we will have Wicked on Zack, and it looks like Yellow Pete will be on Ezreal, and I, I talked to him a little bit earlier today, um, when we saw, after the CIS games, when we saw an Ezreal actually go 8% armor Ooh. pen, 8% magic pen, and no flat. And 4% nice stone asked him, what, what's with that? <laughs> I was like, that's a little, little uncommon. And, you know, him and also and Frog are standing around and they're like, you know, it's, it's actually not that bad. Like, it's pretty much like 30 points into offensive, but it's still really high damage. It can work out really well. We'll see whether it does work out. We can see that Draven did get locked in. And actually, come to think of it, who is it playing it near? There's Draven Thresh, wasn't it? Draven Thresh, very, very strong lane. But he's got Draven Janna this time around. Of course, that shield's going to be buffing up that attack damage. Yellow Star's going to probably be quite aggressive here with N-Rated alongside him. It's also going to be top lane, I think, top lane, so has Kennen, which I have not seen for a while. Of course, Elise was banned out. You know, we saw Joe Miller dropping the bomb yesterday of uh, the fact that he's only lost one single game in the LCS so far on Elise, so yeah. as. 
And uh, honestly, it showed yesterday because he was brilliant on it against Ninjas in Pajamas. Dominant form. Last final pick. Frog and what are you going to play? Will it be an Evia? It is the bird. It is the word. And Krep was like, you know what? I'm not going to I'm not gonna toss it around. I'm just going to go straight forward just and mark it boom. in. Yeah, and people will love me for that. But I'm trying to think. Fnatic's lineup. You have a really weird composition. I'm like, I understand what they're going for in the end, but um, having Jarvan, Kennen, and Janna, it kind of throws each other off, all three of those at the yeah. same time, where you have Kennen, you want them grouped up. They want to get them grouped up, and they're going to knock them out. Yeah, and then Janna wants like, no, get, get away. We don't yeah. want you around here. So I guess what it does is it gives Soaz an easy way to get in with Cyanide, and also gives him an easy escape. So he doesn't have to go for his zonage right away, which is the key point. He can go for a lot of AP if he wants to. So that might be exactly what he's going to do here. But what's really curious for me is, what's Wicked going to build? Because we've had Soaz be very, very vocal. We talked about this yesterday, about if you're behind in lane, build tanky, and you'll be fine. If you're ahead in lane, build damage. But Wicked, he will always build, like, Sork Boots and a Haunting Guys, then go straight tank after. And well, I wonder how well Soaz will be able to counter that. And if they build tanky, that's going to limit them on damage for a, certainly a period until Froggen gets going. Because True. you're going to have Nautilus, he's going to be a tank. You're going to have Thresh, well, he's obviously going to be the support. You're going to have Yellow Pete zipping around, but he's going to be as far back as he can because he's on Ezreal. He doesn't want to get too involved in this one. So effectively, it's a very tanky build from Evil Geniuses here. We'll see how it works out from here. It is, of course, the crowd here in Moscow. They are very vocal, it's safe to say. Even loving the ward kills in the last <laughs> previous game, which is, uh, of course, where it all started at CLG EU versus Team World Elite back in the Season 2 World Finals, and that game has a lot to answer for in more ways than one. I'd imagine you still have nightmares about that. It, it's still not a pleasant experience <laughs> to think back to that game. Of course, we are about to get into it. So, we also have signature champions, Signa two signature champions, honestly. The mid laners, Twisted Fate versus Anivia. How do we see this one going? Because... And more importantly, are they going to be up against each other? Because we have seen a number of lane swaps in the past. And Nivea, well, we know what Froggen's going to do. He's going to farm. He's going to sit farming. Yeah. Peke, though, he kind of is always very mobile. And I expect to see him maybe stacking up with Soaz. If you think back to the spring split when they were together, it would always be Soaz split pushing. Peke would join him. They'd get kills, push a tower. See, the, the problem that they're going to run into, Fnatic, I think they will send the mid laners middle and go against each other. But the one thing is that if you're in against a Twisted Fate and you're not running Teleport, you want to run someone that can push really, really quickly. And Anivia has the ability to do that, obviously, with her ultimate, with her Q if he does level that first, and then um, just push the lanes really quickly, punish Twisted Fate for leaving. But in the meantime, we'll get back to that as potentially some level 1 action coming out here soon. Well, the, the big thing is they've got the full-on Hook City going on there with obviously Thresh and and Nautilus in there. We'll see whether that managed to land any of those combos. We did see those hooks landing early on from Thresh in previous games last week at DreamHack. Oh, and Rated coming close. Does put the ward down. They didn't throw out that hook, though, because, of course, you know, Snoopy doesn't really want to start out without his level 1 skill. In yeah, he, he's, he sometimes had to when they went for invades take uh, Taunt, was it, who's Shen most of the time, uh, take his Taunt level 1. And because of that, he was slower in the jungle, so he was, you know, countering a little bit, but he was able to come back in the game. But with the Nautilus, you want that level 6 as quick as possible, so he's definitely going to be choosing something Something a little bit more safe. But thinking Maybe back to Fnatic in terms of, you were mentioning split pushing, you know, having Soaz uh, split push and then Xpeke joins. If you do that, Froggen, I mean, if he goes by himself, he can stop that push just if he has a mana for it. And then, of course, Fnatic would be left with, you know, their their Janna, their Draven, and, and their Jarvan. So I don't imagine he's going to go for things just like that, but I want to see how well Xpeke works around the changes to Twist of Fate in 3.7, where the E no longer gives cooldown reduction, and your ultimate at the base level, or at earlier levels, is a lot, uh, is a lot longer. Yeah, and just to remind everyone, we are on 3.7. Unlike the North American LCS, it was on 3.8 this week. We're on 3.7 because we've been on the road for the last two weeks. The players, it would be a little bit unfair for them to throw that out. And we do have the hook going thrown out. And, of course, we have this duo lane pairing of Pete and Crepo up against Yellowstar and M-Rated in the top lane. So it's going to be Evil Genius that have initiated this switch. They wanted to go up the top. They wanted the 2v1. But... Fnatic have just said, no, we're quite happy to have Draven and Janna up against Ezreal and Gr Thresh. Yeah, Draven, it just, he hurt so much earlier on, or early on. If you apply a Janna shield with that as well, his attack damage is just ridiculous um, because of the Q gives him extra AD, not to mention the bleed that uh, gets applied as well. So you cannot really trade with him uh, early on unless you get a lot of harass down. But in the end, I don't think Evil Geniuses will be able to do that to him since uh, Yellowstar, he's going to have life still sitting at 4% currently. Oh, meanwhile, of course, the bottom lane, that does mean that the two solo laners are against each other. That'll be Wicked and Soaz, and that's going to be Kennen and Zach going off. 
against each other. They both just hit level two. No crazy aggression coming out from either of them. And it is, of course, Soas winning out in terms of CS early on. The mid lane, of course, we did talk about it. The fact that two of them are on the Signet Champions. It is going to be a hook, though, landing on Yellowstar. And actually, Grepo is going to follow through on this one. Did just hit level two. Have they got enough damage down? Pete taking a lot of aggression from Yellowstar there. And that was actually a pretty even trade. And what's really, what's really cool about that poll is it kind of tells you a story of Evil Genesis versus Fnatic, where Fnatic has never gotten first blood against Evil Geniuses in the uh, spring and summer split so far. Not one first blood. And that's that's actually quite a lot of games against each other. Probably about eight games by now, I'd say. Because they played four in the season. Well, sorry, that's, they that's played not including three in playoffs. the playoffs. That's oh, not including playoffs. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's separate for me. Well, but nevertheless, the hook does come through once again. Yellowstar was the target. And rated also being bullied out by Snoopy. Turns back in there. There's a pink ward, actually, from Fnatic in that push. And Snoopy's like, get away from here. Stop, stop, yo, Jay. Easy, easy. No, he's going to get it anyway. One more swing of it. Well, will Crepo land that hook through? Is it going to be the double hook combo? Yes, it is. Actually, they're both through him at the same time. They're going to get out towards Yellowstar, but in comes Cyanide. There's going to be Yellowstar to focus. The barrier's burned. Have they got enough damage? One more. The Ignite's there. There's going to be Thresh picking up the kill. Now Snoopy. The hook will be back available shortly. N-rated might not be able to escape this one. Is the cooldown going to be enough? Yes, it is. Howling Gale comes in. There's one hook. There's the second. And it's going to be a kill for Yellow Pete. And that is a double in the top lane for Evil Geniuses. And EG keeping true to that whole fact of them always getting first blood against Fnatic in that at least the regular season. Great job by, by EG, though. I wonder if that was actually a slight mistake. At least Fnatic might have misjudged their damage there because they knew Snoopy was there. They knew he was sticking around. And Sana came up the river to try to counter it. Got a three-man knockup. But as you can tell by the scoreboard, obviously it wasn't enough in the end. And Yellow Pete's able to pick up a kill as well as Krepo securing one. I think the fact that those hooks did come out, they were obviously watching Snoopy. They knew that Krepo was there. But the fact that they completely locked up uh, Yellow Star for a long period of time, he just didn't get any chance to lay any damage down. He was just simply focused. So as though going aggressive on Wicked here, does get the stun on the turret, continues those shurikens thrown towards him. Happy to take a tower hit. And that does force Wicked back for a short while. Not going to go back yet, though. Those double Rejuvi builds aren't going to be enough to regen. And something a little bit interesting about Soaz is Kennen, actually. He's running 2% lifesteal. So he's not down there for utility, but he has one uh, quintessence for that. So we'll see how that's going to work out for him. Gives him a little bit more sustain, but Froggen doing what he does best, just like you were saying earlier. He's farming up that 5 CS ahead of Xpeke currently. There's also a huge CS difference in the bottom lane, which is the top laners, if that makes sense. <laughs> where Soaz has 37 CS to Wicket's 19. Yeah, that's a big CS advantage building. We'd also have Froggen just slightly ahead in terms of farm. Actually, interesting to hear Froggen last night talking about, we were on about the blue buff, you know, the fact that you can get taken away from you and everything. It's like, I could play an idiot without the blue buff. I just don't care. And also, he seemed pretty proud of his record. I was saying, you know, you and Rapid Star both played a lot of them. He's like, I reckon I've got about a thousand more games than him. Doesn't matter though, Wicked getting dived on. He's not going to be able to escape this one. The passive's going to come up. Is it going to be enough? The hook comes in, doesn't land on Soas. And that's going to be a flash from Cyanide. He's taken very low as well. Wicked, the Ignite's going to take his passive down. He's going to try and tick towards the turret. No, he picks up the little globule and survives. If I'm not mistaken, he actually made that globule fall off by just using ability really quickly, then picking it up so it healed him enough. Great job by Wicked to show the mastery of Zack, and he saves his passive, which was the real key point because it committed the Ignite out of Soas right there. And it looks like Snoopy's not done just yet. He wants to force Ooh. him out, but stretch line, not long enough, unfortunately. No. Quite. Very close, though, with Froggen, though, making a move, chugging through their mana pots, heading towards the top lane here. There's actually no vision whatsoever from Fnatic. They're going to know that he's not in lane. They haven't backed away, but instead, Froggen does and chooses wisely to back off. Didn't think he could have get in there. Honestly, I'm not sure about that one. Maybe better turn it, but look at this bottom lane. They're still sticking around. He's oh, actually he flash flash. oh, wicked flashing in, trying to get the let's bounce on. Does manage to use it, doesn't catch on towards Soas. So Soas already getting away from that one. Dredge line maybe going to come out from Snoopy. I don't think they've got enough damage on the seat to finish this one through. But now it's going to be Peke. Peke joining down there, stun on towards Snoopy. Snoopy's going to be the focus. He is going to go down. The ignite is ticking. Soas turns out of one. The charge comes down. Peke is going to be able to pick a card. Stun card on towards Wicked. That's going to be the wild card following up. The Shuriken's coming through. And that will be the passive props. They've got the minions coming in. They just need to clear that way very quickly. Oh, no, They're going to get the red card. So it's taken down by the turret. Oh, and it wasn't any hits coming out. Wicked does reform the globules back there, but unfortunately, nobody managed to get any damage on Soaz. I think that's a definition of going ham right there, what Soaz just did under that turret. Got taken down, but luckily, he didn't give anything away, just like you mentioned. And Wicked lives to fight another day here, but Froggen, meantime, is going to push middle lane since uh, Xpeke is no longer there, but Sanide, he's going to be there to stop it. He's going to be able to pick up the, uh, the CS, get the extra levels, as he's now at level 5. He should be really close to level 6 now at this point. 
but great job by Stupi just to be there quick enough in time. Great job by Wicked as well. He's still hanging on in there. And they obviously realized that Peke completely out of mana in that bottom lane. So he's just like, well, I can still stick around. True Shop Raj flashing through there. Hook did come through, but it's Crepo simply getting a CS with it instead. Didn't quite manage to hit that minion. Wicked taking the damage in that top lane, sticking around just as long as humanly possible. But look at the CS between them, 51 to 33. And that's a big advantage for Soaz. Yeah, it, it really, really is, especially since he hasn't haunting guys now. But it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a breather here, a little bit of some down time before any fighting breaks out again so i think we should take stock actually in terms of items because there's some really key uh key items built and it's strict, uh, strictly for snoopy in my opinion where he has the boots mobility so we know snoopy has been a support jungler mostly and he's playing somebody's comfortable on like nautilus but he went for the boots early on because he wants to get around the map he wants to help out all of his lanes and obviously it's been working out uh, very well for him we look over at Froggen, who you know almost has his catalyst done has the tier done so he's going to have that, uh, that heavy mana pool built up very soon and even over on uh, Yellow Pete who has the uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard and we also see Xpeke going for very early Lich Bane so Xpeke might be trying to go for uh, some really quick pushes like onto turrets well that wouldn't be nothing new <laughs> for yeah. Fnatic that's for sure well, so he's going to be frogging picking up that blue buff that he said he doesn't need all the time. But he's going to get it anyway. Wicked returns to Lays, gets himself that giant's belt as well. The Shuriken's continuing to fly from Soaz there. In terms of CS, he's almost double now. Soaz definitely causing problems for Wicked in this bottom lane. And remember, it was Evil Genius that initiated the switch, and Fnatic immediately responded. They wa wanted this lane. They wanted Soaz up against Wicked. And look at that. Despite the fact he's got that giant spot, that extra chunk of health, Soaz already with that haunting guys doing a lot of damage to him. Yeah, so we mentioned earlier in the picks and bans of, of having the Jana mixed in with the whole uh, Kennen jarvin combo. And it's kind of showing in terms of items. You know, I mentioned that he's probably going to go for Zonius first because he can afford to go for the extra damage since he has that safeguard of Janna. So it looks like he's going to be doing that. And with the CS lead he has over Wicked, he's going to be able to apply a lot of pressure. But it looks like Evil Geniuses, they're going to be heading down towards Dragon here. And they should be able to pick this one up because they have all five members there. Well, they do, but Fnatic were already responding to this one and are actually a bit closer. And if you think of the advantage that Soaz has, immediately Evil Geniuses is like, whoa, we do not have any positional advantage here. We thought we'd snuck down there time, but Yellow Star and N-Rated had followed the whole way through, so could we see some of those Wombo Combo hooks getting in there? But I think XPK may well be the target. We see that wave being wiped out very quickly. Rogan goes looking, poke on towards N-Rated. Yellow Pete just trying to keep them at bay. XPK did back away for a short period. They're going straight for Dragon. Yeah, and the thing is, Evil Geniuses, they are the quickest first Dragon taker in the entirety of LCS, or sorry, of Europe LCS, in the regular season, and with uh, about nine minutes and 48 seconds, which is a little bit behind where we're currently at, but they, they show they really want to take dragons as much as possible, but they might be baiting in a fight. They do, and rated caught out. Trisha Barrage comes across, the combo comes in. Peke now the focus. Snoopy goes on towards him, but the Ignite is running. Peke picks up that kill. We also see another one going down. Froggen's going to get taken very low. Peke's trying to get away from this one, but he picks up. Yellow Pete goes down. Froggen doing what he can. In the moment, he's just playing Shield Chicken at the moment, trying to run away from this one. So he's going to flash through. He could pick up a double kill. Froggen's trying to get on towards Cyanide. One more hit. Will it be enough? No, he can't get the tick. Kennen, meanwhile, does manage to take down Soaz on towards Crepo. He's going to come back around. And look at this. Froggen's going to get away with this. And Fnatic, well, instead, they're just going to push the mid lane. Bad bird. Oh, my gosh. You just saw him kiting as much as possible. And that was against two or three members of Fnatic where they couldn't lock him down and pick up the kills. But in the end, I believe it was just a one for one. No, no, no. no sorry. Yeah. No, no. Did Yellow Peak go down? Yep. Peak yeah, went so down. Yeah, so one for two. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Snoopy went down, that was three. <laughs> three oh, okay, for so two. three for two. Three for two in favor of Fnatic, I believe, was the advantage gain there. But the Dragon didn't go down, it is still available. Wicked's going to clear out that bottom lane. Didn't really get heavily involved in that fight. And again, it was Froggen that simply tried his best to keep them away. And actually, you know, Evil Geniuses, in terms of team fight, were very split there. They weren't sure what focus they wanted to go on. Peke did get caught with those hooks but nobody else went with him. And we talked about this in the previous game, Lemon Dogs, how quick they were to just focus those targets. We didn't see that with Evil Geniuses there. Yeah, I think it was like a little bit of a, a cockiness just in terms of, hey, we got Enredia down. We have a 5-1-4 fight. We could probably win this really quickly. But Soaz did a phenomenal job of zoning them away. 
And Fnatic, they're looking here to try to take Dragon. They've only taken it once against, uh, or take the first Dragon once against EG, but they're going to be going in here. The Howling Gale keeps them away, as does the Monsoon. Cyanide picks it up, and Crepo completely out of position. Wicked also being focused on by Soaz just at the top there. The Flay comes out. Crepo's going to go down. That's one kill. Can they get on towards Frog? And oh, and easy. Wicked just gets away. It's actually Snoopy that blocks it off. Pete gets stunned up instantly, though. Cyanide slides on through, and Pete gets taken down. It's a double kill for Yellowstar. They're not done yet, though. Soaz is going to keep on going. That's going to be a triple kill. Can they get on towards the egg? You see Soaz, he's doing what he can. They're going to push the wave in. Here, can we see the quadra kill coming out from Yellowstar? One more hit. There it is. And that's a quadra kill. Very nicely done. And you never want a trade in this fed right now. He's going to be able to go back with a lot of items sitting on 1,500 gold. They got Dragon. They got four kills. Fantastic job by Fnatic to turn around what looked like a very, well, which was a very early, or early lead for Evil Geniuses. And they're going to get a turret off for this. And that's how quick a game can turn in League of Legends. So that's why you have to be so careful to not make that one mistake because a team like this, a quality team like this, will not let that happen, or not let it go by uh, unscathed. A dominant, dominant performance so far from Fnatic. But if you think back to DreamHack, Evo Geniuses did exactly the same on Fnatic. This time around, though, Fnatic are looking unstoppable in this game. Oh, Crepo's going to throw out the hook. <laughs> and just like that, the flash, uh, sorry, the, uh, the blue pill comes through. It is going to be the bottom lane, though, the first turret of the game, second turret of the game, sorry. The uh, middle turret went down just a moment ago, of course. And that will be the bottom lane taken down. 95 CS to 62, keeping that 30 CS gap. But more importantly, he's one one four to a zero one zero wicked and overall all the lanes tell a little story and Fnatic are way ahead in gold yeah i think what's most important about all this is just how much gold they really picked up they got two turrets four kills one dragon off of just that one fight alone we see yes yeah, so he's gonna get pulled here we see the actual ultimate come out of uh, yeah, the expected he goes down to bottom oh he's gonna try and catch on towards him didn't quite get the stun there it is there's the stun through the stun card will he get layered on top you bet your boots no one more shuriken will do it so as comes in does the lightning charge meanwhile evil genius is there trying to get aggressive on towards his middle turret i'm not sure they have it in them though yellow star comes in there cyanide slides on through just bounce him in the air frog and tries to turn the damage back around on him but the tower is defended but while this is all happening we have the top lane push coming in and that inner so it's time to get pressured by Fnatic, and it's going to be Soaz and Peke once again doing work in the lanes. And they have a Lich Bane on X Peke, so they're going to be out pushing them right here. And Yellow P, he might get the turret, but losing a tier 2 turret for that top turret is definitely not worth it in the end. As you see the picture in picture, it's going to come down. But still, a great job by, by Fnatic right there. Fantastic play, and the fact that they could keep that three-man defense in the mid lane because Pete wasn't there, because Pete was off at the top there, trying to do what he can. And honestly, that's there's nothing wrong about that. He's doing simply what an AD carry should be doing, and that's keeping those lanes pushed. Kept trying to get some free farm going on. But as is always the case with Fnatic, once Twisted Fate is allowed, Peke will be zipping off into those lanes and keeping all the split push going. And speaking of the split push in terms and as well as the kills that's gone down. Look at, oh, we do see Snoopy actually gonna pull on a Sinai. Wicked's gonna go in on this, but Sinai should be able to escape. And look at the kill spread we currently have right now on Fnatic. Two kills over to Soaz, three kills on Xpeke, and four on a yellow star. They have all their kills in the right places. Seven assists, zero deaths for Cyanide. Fnatic, just in terms of how this game is going to progress, are looking so, like, so perfect at this point. And the scary damage that Soaz can do now. I think Zonya's Hourglass probably will be coming out next. He's already got the Sorcerer's Boots and Haunting Guys in there. So he's got their Magic Pen already sorted. Once that gets completed in Zonya's Hourglass, it's just going to do so much. Froggen is trying his best. He's trying to keep the waves going. He's trying to keep the CS going. He's ahead at the moment in terms of CS to of, uh, of anyone in the game. But unfortunately for him, the rest of his team are letting him down. That Rod of Ages will be ready soon by Froggen, but what else is he going to be able to do? We did talk about the fact that the damage would be missing from EG. They're going to have to stall this one out, and you know what? With Anivia, that's exactly what they can do. <laughs> exactly, they have the ability to do that as long as they can keep control of their own blue buffs. But Fnatic with a Jarvan, they have the ability to pull off a Harding Age, though depending on where it happens, if Froggen actually gets his, his wall leveled up relatively soon, you can cut off the rest of the team. So if Sinai goes in by himself, you can cut off the cannon, keep him out of the fight. In the meantime, Fnatic, they're going to go for a push on this top turret here. It's already down about half health, but Froggen's actually getting caught bottom. Froggen's going to get caught out. That's going to be the intro. There's the axes spinning back there. Yellowstar's going to get on towards him and takes him down. Cyanide caught out in the jungle as well. There, we're trying to set up a gank on Yellow Pete, actually. He does Cataclysm on towards Wicked just to <laughs> gain that little bit of distance. He can slide away from this one, no problem. But Yellow Pete, he's got to be careful. Oh, he's twisting Peke. fate. Peke's coming in. He gets on towards Wicked. Puts the stun guard down. The lantern's actually in the Baron pit. This means Wicked. Him. Wicked's actually going to take a couple of Baron hits there. He gets taken down. Yellow P in the top lane gets pinned off by the summon. 
He gets dropped as well. And now so Snoopy's in trouble. He's trying to use that Dreadline to escape. Cyanide's going to have his combo. Once that comes down, he should be able to slide back in towards him. Peke trying to chase onto it. And that's the top tower going down. His 12 3 in kills. But look what happened. Yellowstar was left alone at the bottom. They took that turret. Now he's on the inhibitor turret, already down to half health here. And Fnatic, they're hitting them from every single angle. And it's working out so perfectly for him. Yellowstar is going to be. A little caught out here, but he could be able to turn this around. He may well turn it around. The dredge lines, Lanzo. He's going to get popped this time. Froggen's going to pick up this kill. And this is going to be a big bounty as well. The wall comes in, but he goes to Snoopy. Snoopy picks up the kill, but the top turret, that's another inner turret going down here. Fnatic, just as you talked about Gambit doing, every time they lose someone in one lane, they take an advantage in the other. And the thing is, this is like the first time they've lost someone in one lane to go push for another. They've just been hitting them on three separate lanes at the same time, and they've been doing it so well that they haven't really lost anyone until that moment right there. And now they picked up two more turrets, if I'm not, yeah, no, three turrets total off of that. They're 12 to 4. Wicked's going to go and expect it. He might be in trouble here. We'll see what happens. Well, he's going to try and walk away from this one. That Sunfire K burning away, doing the damage. Is he going to be able to get the stun card? The flash dredge line comes out. Snoopy should be able to get the slowdown. One more hit will really do it. There it is. And it's going to be Wicked that picks up the kill. An important kill for Evil Genius is there. Can they turn an advantage? They want to get that middle turret. Froggen's wiping out the waves as quick as possible. The thing is, they did get another bounty off of that as well. Dragon is available if they want to go for it. So they should be able to pick up this dragon. Should be able to turn it into, or sorry, tower and then dragon if they want. But in the meantime, Fnatic is there. Soaz is there. Cyanide going in. Cyanide going straight in. Soaz is going to back it up. He's going to charge on towards him. Can he get that ultimate going? He's going to get on the course. Grab him. What a great wall comes out. But Cataclysm from Cyanide jumps in. Realizes they don't really have the positional advantage. The Lantern being thrown out. Can he take that Dark Passage? It's available. <laughs> Soaz actually stands on it purposely. Wow. And he simply attacks him for a great positioning from Soaz. And that's a Yordle blocking it yeah. off from a Zack. <laughs> like, that is hard to do. But now Fnatic, because Dragon's available, because of the aggression they just applied on EG, they should to take this one for themselves and look at the goal lead at 19 and a half minutes. Well, the action certainly hotted up here in the last 10 minutes. Crepo's going to get caught out there. The sun comes out. One more shot from Soaz. Will it be enough? Tries to get the shield down. Pops out. There's lightning surge. He gets dropped. Very nicely played there. Froggen comes in. But again, it's Snoopy that gets the kill. And Crepo said, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. Land the hook on him. Kept him there. But it's a very good point. Snoopy getting two crucial kills that he doesn't necessarily need. Expect he's going to chase on Yellow Pete here. Oh, he's my gonna God. Pace, throws out the stun card. Goes into wild card. Ignites down. But barrier from Pete. Is it going to be enough to turn it around? No, it's not that lead pain doing work for Peke. Oh, that was like a next level play right there because he popped his ultimate a little bit earlier and then just went ahead of him after the gold card hit, but Froggen's coming in. He's not spotted yet. He could take X Peke down. He's going to throw out. There's going to glacial shot. Can he get enough damage down on towards him? The wall is available. Uses it to try and get vision. One more shot comes out there. There it is. Oh, he gets the stun card back on Froggen. And you can see Peke. He's going to try and get away from this one. The bird is so slow moving, but Cyanide. Cyanide is closing the gap. He's coming in towards Peke. Another wild card lands. He could turn around. He doesn't want to chase this one through. And now you can see Cyanide's going to sliding. He gets him down. There's going to be the passive from Froggen. He is going to be an egg on the floor, and that is simply going to be a runny mess right now. He's going to get respawned in there. We do see Snoopy chasing back in off the side there. Dark passage thrown out. Sinai gets hooked in. They can turn this one around. Peke trying to get away from him. Monsoon from Enrate. It's some great plays coming out from both teams. Sinai's going to get lashed down. Crepo picks up the kill. Now they're turning tail. They're on towards Snoopy. It's going to be Soaz chasing him. Can he get the stuns down? They're going to give up on this one. Wow, what play. Sinai actually the only one to go down after Pete. Someone get Demon a new oxygen tank because I think he's going to need it here. But wow, just like you said, constant action left and right, constant fighting, and it's chaos. But it's like almost controlled chaos, except both teams are just kind of reacting to how the other team's playing. But overall, you have to say, Fnatic really came out ahead right there. I cannot believe Xpeka escaped that, especially with Yellow Pete's ult coming in with Stupid hot on his tails with Boots mobility. But Xpeka with this item build. Oh, the hook! The hook threw the Howling Gale into the wards, the leash. Is it going to be enough, though? Yellow Pete comes in. He's got that Oracle on. He doesn't want to burn anything he can. So with the Snoop, he comes in, lands the Dreadline. True Shot Barrage comes across. Evil Geniuses get themselves another kill. And now, what are they going to do off the back of this? Because every time they kill someone, they need to make a play happen. Fnatic's been doing it this entire time, but with just the aggression they're applying with pushing up every lane, they're not able to just push out and make a play happen. They're not out of this game just yet. It's about a 10,000 difference, or at least it's approaching it. But they still have Frog and Anivia. And I wanted to say, uh, when actually Frogman was chasing down Xpeke, he couldn't catch a Lich Bane and a Boots of, a boots of Swiftness, Twisted Fate. It was just too, too no fast. Chance. He's it's, just, too fast. it's just a flapping little bird that goes a little bit slow, unfortunately. Has got Flash available if he maybe needs to chase it next time around. So, Red Buff just being picked up by Yellow Star, Blue Buff being picked up by Peke. So, at the moment, Fnatic do have that advantage on the positions as well. 5-1 in turrets, big advantage there. Gold, you can see already, it's nearly 8,000 gold. It is, it is 8,000 gold. In fact, it's not nearly. It's bang on. 14-8 in kills, 22 minutes gone.
Are they going to go for any objectives now? It seems they are grouping up. Potentially, now they could try and set up something for Baron. Set up some sort of ward placements. And it looks like they're going to try and get on towards Brogan, but the wall straight away says, Cyanide, no, you're not doing it today, lad. I'm glad you say that because Fnatic has never taken first Baron against Evil Geniuses. And that's because in two of the three games that they, uh, they beat Evil Geniuses, they didn't need it. With the way it's going right now, it might actually happen. Expect he's going to get caught by Wicked here. Wicked's going to jump on towards him. He only pulled a red card, actually. Let's bounce was used. Is it going to be enough? The flash comes out. And you can see Peke's going to try and get away. He's got nothing to stun him, nothing to upset him. But he's going to come around straight in towards Snoopy. Cyanide there to try and cut him off. And now we're going to see Soaz coming. They're going to try and turn this one around. Dredge line from Snoopy actually pulled him into Fnatic. The slide through. And it's going to be Snoopy going down. Oh, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. Because the dredge line that he's so dark. Passage come out from Krepo once again. How many times have these supports saved the of their players. Too many for me to count, Demon. I can tell you that. I guarantee this could be an amazing highlight reel off this game. And so has not been aggressive, pushing up towards Krepo, who currently has that Oracle. But the thing is, when was the last time we saw Yellow Star? When was the last time we saw Yellow Star? Exactly. In a fight? I'm wondering that. He's just been is, farming. Yeah, exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is look at his items. He almost has an Infinity Edge done if he wants to go for that. He has a Zeal. If he does start participating in these fights, they're going to be completely one-sided. And yet, Evil Geniuses, that, that I wanted to see Snoopy's face there when he dredge line in towards Blue, because you know he was like, "Oops, don't want to be here," and he tried to back away. And luckily, Krepo was there to save Krepo's him. Krepo's like, "Don't worry, bro. I got you. I got <laughs> Guys, you. you're back. I'm a support." You can do the pull-ups for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, he looked pretty good doing it in the video. Oh, a ward going down there. That delights the crowd every time. Crepo there with that pink ward. Uh, Oracle on, sorry. He's gonna, he put a pink down after he cleared it out. Well, that's, that's dedication right there. And Rated looking to do exactly the same around that Baron pit area. Trying to get any vision they can. They know the Baron's possibly going to be the next <laughs> Look at target. Him. He's he going for it. so scared about going into that push. He's like, I'm going blind, guys. I'm going in. <laughs> so as you win me, you win me, you got me back. It's a support war. It's a support war. <laughs> but I mean, in the end, it's actually a smart play to put a, a pink ward down because that way you'll know if someone wards that. So later on, when you try to go for like maybe a gank up behind Soaz right now in the top lane, you'll know if there's a ward there. I'm wondering where Peke is going to go. If they try and close in towards that top lane, Froggen is miles away from the action. And you can see they're already pushing up towards that mid lane. Wicked is the only one there. Already we saw Froggen trying to back off, but it does mean that three members of Fnatic, now five members of Fnatic, all in the mid lane and only four to defend it for EG. And they don't have the key member or the key man there to defend against it with the Anivia. So looks like Fnatic will go to pick up this turret quite a bit. Krepo trying to go for the engage. Krepo tries to get a flash hook. The dreadline not coming out from Snoopy as well because he got locked up by the stun. The box coming out as well. That is down for Krepo now. And Fnatic, well, they got a lot of damage on that turret, but the rest of Evil Geniuses are here to block it off. Now Froggen is in there. That Anivia ultimate will wipe out the waves, no problem. Oh, man, Demon. I, just, I took a look at items really quickly again. The Zonia's Hourglass is done for Soaz. That means we're going to see some dives happen really soon. I mean, that's it. That's what they want to go for, unless they want to keep letting x a split push, which he's currently doing. But you see, the rest of the members of Fnatic, they're grouped up middle. They're trying to make a play here. And knowing that the flash is down for Krepo and the box, it kind of gives them the ability to kind of play around with them and mess with them. That's a giant bubble on Cyanide there. The rest of the team looking to come around. Peke only draw a blue card. He's actually the hook goes in. There's a second hook as well. They get the and stun. stun. Peke gets completely locked up. Zonia's Hourglass didn't even get a chance to use. Soaz goes aggressive. Tower did go down. Yellow Peak does manage to get away from this one. Zonia's Hourglass comes out from Soaz as well. True Shot Barrage goes across. There's going to be an egg from Froggen. They EG can turn this one around. They're all very low though. Wicked's coming in. Dredge line doesn't land. Froggen is back up. Full mana, full hit points. And that was a two for zero for Evil Geniuses. Holy crap. So this is what Evil Geniuses does best when they run with an Anivia. They wall someone off and they lock them down, but they did it reverse way. They did it with Snoopy landing a pull, Krepa phone up with a pull, Hook City, just like you said earlier, Demon, and then of course the Flash Frost coming out of Froggen to lock them down. Expect it didn't even have a chance. But, again, Fnatic are picking up an advantage. They're taking the Dragon, they're stretching that gold lead. They're keeping the advantage going, and now it's going to be 10,000 gold between the two teams. You wouldn't believe it if you see the fights, because it's been working so well for Fnatic, uh, for Evil Geniuses, rather, but Cyanide and Co. Every time they go somewhere, Cyanide is there. He's helping out. He's trying to create the place. And now it looks like the blue bluff is coming in there. Are we going to see Snoopy? Is he going to walk in and try and smite it? No, he doesn't land the smite. He does land the dredge line, though, on towards Yellowstar. The rest of Evil Geniuses are closing the gap. He gets the slow on Yellowstar. Is it going to be enough? We're going to have to see a flash come out. Trisha Barrage lands on towards Yellowstar. Dredge line will be available in a moment. Who will they focus it on towards? The slow catches on towards Cyanide. He may be the focus. And Rate is going to have Howling Gale if they get that one little step closer. Dredge line has to come out now, but there's the Howling Gale, perfectly timed. Snoopy tries to go for it, he not going to it. too. Mm. 
tried to flash, didn't happen, but look at what they've left open. They've left Snoopy, uh, sorry, Peke and Soas once again. The double threat combo from Fnatic going straight up the mid lane. There's Fnatic actually backing away, and you see the rest of the Ujesis. They're going for a flank here onto both of them, but this turret shouldn't be able to stay alive that much longer. And if anything, they can back away, leaving it at a quarter life, but they're not going to do that just yet. And that's going to be the ultimate. Peke's going to spot where they're going, immediately going to back away from this one. They took, what, two thirds of the health off that one. Peke is going to back away from it. He leaves Soas on his own. Snoopy could land that dredge line if he wants. Wicked's coming around the side. He might try and charge up and land the bounce on towards him. Doesn't matter. Lightning Surge gets him the hell out of there. Yeah, man. So has poor guy. I expect I just leave him. I was like, yeah, you got this. Don't worry. I believe in you. You're a same bolt. You can run away. And the rest of the time, Kerpo has another Oracle. He's going to go for a pull, but unfortunately not hit anyone just yet. And still, this game is very close. You saw the CC chain that Evil Geniuses were able to pull off. If they could do that yet again, Maybe to expect it, they can hold this to happen, but in ready to force the flash over that wall. Force the flash, that's gonna sign. That's gonna buy time for the middle turret, surely. While this is all happening, oh, they do throw the Dark Passage out. That is going to pull in towards the turret. So that will be an inner turret picked up by Evil Genius. It's actually going to be the second turret of the game that EG have picked up. And they're just bullying their way through that mid lane. They're going to back off. Advantage gain. Let's go back home. Yeah, that's the thing, is that Fnatic, they, if you look at the top side of the map, they've kept that lane pushed up the entire time. Uh, Expect A and so we're pushing bottom earlier on, but the lane has finally reset and pushed back out for, for Evil Geniuses, so that's the only one that's left open. But look what EG's doing. They're waiting for Fnatic to push out. They're trying to make something happen here. They do have a word to spot Soez right now, but luckily for Fnatic, they're actually going down to the, towards the bottom side of the map. They wanted Soez to go for it. He nearly fell for it, but instead they stuck around. Like you mentioned, they were trying to go for it. Instead, doesn't matter. Peke is going to wipe out that bottom wave. Let's have a look, Jason. Let's just take a moment, a moment to go over the items, because there's a lot of big items starting to pop into shape here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I guess we can do that right take now. A take, take a little breather, yeah. You can re replenish your oxygen tank, as we see Wicked right now. So, he has Sunfire Cape to get really tanky. He's building towards an Abyssal Scepter, and I noticed something a little bit earlier. He actually has 8% armor pen and 8 flat match penetration, so he's going for the stack of flat uh, penetration. You look over at Snoopy, who has been having the best game so far, but because of those kills, he's secured earlier. <laughs> was it still? He was able to get his runic ball work done, so he has uh, he makes himself a little bit tankier, it makes his team tankier. You look over at Yellow Pete, he has his mirror mana done, he has his last whisper done, and he's working towards his iceborne gauntlets relatively soon, so he's gonna do extremely well as ex damn expect is fast. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed that. Uh, but then you look over on Expect's side, he has his zonius now, so if he does get pulled in. He won't, they won't, won't be blown up. Well, he Unless he gets stunned. Then, then Unless he, obviously he gets stunned. And then there's, <laughs> there's a whole lot of stuns that could follow if one goes out there. Peke, uh, sorry, and Ray did does clear out the ward. And immediately one's put back in there. He's just going to stand back a moment. Saw the ward go down. May just go back in and try and pick up another one. You know, you did mention that, of course, so he, is, he is very fast. He's also got twin shadows as well alongside him. So he can slow down. And, and, and it's speed Spain. boots. And alacrity. <laughs> Some swiftness. Yeah, you can just try and get the hell out of there. There is the ward. The hook comes out. It actually lands on the Baron. You don't want to follow that one up, Crepo. That's for sure. Big eye being aggressed. Actually, well, technically he did want to do that because it caused a little bit of damage on towards and rated yep. forced him to back away. But Peke is again pushing our mid lane. Evil Genius is like, fine, you can go over there. We're going to go aggressive. Actually, they do manage to get on towards Soas. Zonia is out. That's used. Is it going to be enough damage? Yes, bounce being used. That's a, quite a few ultimates being to used to take him down. Peke is on the turrets right now. He's on towards the inhibitor turret. We're going to see. It looks like Froggen going back to try and deal with him while the four members of Evil Genius is trying to push up on towards the inhibitor turret. There's the inhibitor turret going down. It's going to be EG pushing on towards their one, but Peke once again doing his backdoor trick. We see Froggen coming out there, catching the damage on towards him. Flash Frost also used, he does catch him. Is he going to have enough stun? No, he's not. Where's he teleporting to? He's gone to the river. I mean, now we're going to see Snyanite going in. He's going to catch across towards him. There's enough damage coming out here. Evil Genius is turning around. That's a mistake because Peke comes in, throws out the wild cards, gets on towards Grepo. The twin shadows go out, slows down Wicked as well. Snoopy's not even worried about him. They're not even focusing him. Now they're going to turn around. Stun card will pull down, slows him down, and that is going to be Snoopy going down. A double kill for Yellow Star, 17-12 now. And well, once again, the damage coming out. Froggen, as soon as he'd been pulled away from that fight, everybody just claps on EG. And that was three kills for two deaths, but they got inhibitor turret off of that. Not to mention, if Xpeke could have got the inhibitor, he could have walked right over to middle turret, which has less, I guess like a fifth life left, and taken it down, and that was a big crit. That was 1,018 damage out of, uh, out of Yellow Star, who has gone relatively unnoticed uh, for, for a huge portion of the game because he's just been farming up quite a bit. 215 CS, and he has Infinity Edge and Bloodthirster done. Looks like he's working towards a Phantom Dancer here next, but his damage is just so ridiculous. And expect a backdooring yet again, forcing someone to deal with him, which it's so hard to deal with any team that can that can split push against you. But Evil Jesus, they gave their shot at it. They stopped him from doing it, but then they lost three people because of it.
Well, they tried to take the advantage a moment, so has got caught out. When honestly, they did get a bit of an advantage. They got a lot of damage on towards that inhibitor turret themselves. So, as it stands, they only have an exposed inhibitor, but still, it's seven three in turrets. They need to maybe take down that bottom lane a bit, or they the can't. top lane. Just do something, anything to prevent the push that Fnatic keep laying down. And look, every single time you look at the lanes, Fnatic just like we're going to shove them lanes exactly. back on you. That's why they can't because now, I mean, they couldn't do it earlier, but now they really can't because if they go top lane to try to get that single turret, if any single member goes up there, even Crepo, then they're just like, hey, we'll right, we'll take your inhibitor turret bottom, we'll take our inhibitor bottom, your inhibitor turret middle, and just open up the game wide for themselves. So now Evil Genesis is pretty much committed to go in middle at this point just to stay even where Fnatic is and yet another dragon gonna be going over to Fnatic extend their gold lead to 13,000 now and Baron still has yet to be taken and remember I mentioned earlier Fnatic has not taken Bar or first Baron against Evil Geniuses yet because they didn't need it and they honestly I'm not sure if they need it again they have a 13,000 gold lead that's a pretty beefy gold lead no matter how much in money we're talking but as the game develops, as the game goes longer, which it's still doing, we see Froggen, he's got himself 1,700 gold on him there. We'll see what he goes back to buy with that. He's at 027, but Anivia stalls games out. And they are, so far, still not lost an inhibitor. The one question I have is, though, can you stall a game out when you have an inhibitor open? Because obviously, if you fight in front of the inhibitor, you can mm -hmm. wall them out, but you don't have that security of the turret. So if they get in there, if they take the inhibitor down, that means someone's going to have to back away and defend against it. Even if you're Anivia, I don't think you can defend against a five-man rush against you, but Fnatic, they're going to clear out the word on Baron. They want to make something happen. Cripple's there, oh, ready to put another word down. But like I said before, Fnatic doesn't really need to go for Baron. They, they, in two of the three games they won, they didn't take it once. It wasn't taken at all. Where are they going here? Oh, no. Snoopy's actually getting straight towards jungler on jungler there. Cyanide Sars goes aggressive, and they do catch on Yellow Pete. Yellow Pete's taking down. That's going to be Fnatic surely turning this fight around. The box comes down for Crepo in a surly defensive move. And that's going to be Snoopy trying to get away. The stun card comes out. Crepo's going to get taken out. One more card from Peke, but Peke will do that. We do see Snoopy also going to go down. There's another one. It's a double for Peke. Look at Frog and then trying desperately to get away from this one. The wild card's going to now he does get the interrupt as well. Oh turns my. around, throws the stun card. Zonya's hourglass comes out, and now he's going to try and go towards it. Wicked tries to go aggressive on him. It's a 2v1, but he doesn't care. He does manage to get the egg out, but Wicked trying to get one more slap on towards him. Can he stretch he's that so last thing? He does. He gets him down. He was very fast, but Bowen is going to go to Fnatic nevertheless. And that was a massive fight for Fnatic once again. Oh no, they're coming in towards this one. They don't realize the Baron's gone down. Fnatic might be able to collapse on towards him. Frog and desperately flapping his wings, trying to get away from this one. And Fnatic, they're going to close the gap. Wicked is going to get caught down. He doesn't quite land the stun on towards him. Let's bounce. Actually, he's still not available. Yes, it is. Wicked bouncing around. Has he got enough damage on Soaz? Now it might have him time to escape this one. And Rated puts the war down. And finally, Wicked gets the base. And now they have everyone even just available now to go in for a fight here. But tonight, they're just going to back away off of that bear. They're going to pick up some items. There's four members of them have over a thousand gold where Soaz has over 1,800. He already had the Zonias. He's going to be able to build pretty much anything he wants to right now. As you see, Wicked picking up his Haunting Guys and his Abyssal Scepter, so has some has actually a ridiculous amount of damage right now. Doesn't have Sork Boots, but still, that's a lot of penetration. And if he can sit in the back line just jumping on Yellow Star, he might have enough damage to take him down. However, Enrated, he picked up an Oracle yet again, pops it already, picked up more wards, and he actually has two GP10, so he realized how hectic this game's been, and he's been trying to keep that ward coverage consistently, which has really been giving Fnatic quite a huge advantage. The problem I'm seeing here is still Froggen's yet to be able to be given a kill. He's got the damage he's, now. He's, he's got nuked the ability. up from last game. He's support AP middle. Support <laughs> AP middle, yeah. He's been putting the damage bound, but frankly, crepo has got four kills, <laughs> which is less than ideal, nevertheless. Fnatic have the kills on the right players, and now with that Baron buff on four members, they are going to push through. But again, you see the wave. He does get wiped out again, and Fnatic... Well, they have to keep every single lane pushed. It's going to be interesting to see how they finally break the siege down because it's going to still be a hard nut to crack they, despite the 16,000 gold lead they have. I think they have that nutcracker though because they keep going towards this bottom lane. Next, Pekka sitting top has his ultimate available. Yellowstar's nowhere here right now. Or he's not even here right now. He's at red buff. So Fnatic needs to be very careful. They don't want to get jumped on right now. However, Evil Jesus obviously doesn't know he's there so they have to kind of give this away anyways. But Fnatic, you can tell, like they want that bottom inhibitor. They're trying to push up, trying to keep that minion wave there. And next, Pekka's actually teleporting into the inhibitor behind him. They're going in for it. Uses that ultimate to get in there. They really want to take this exposed inhibitor. Is it going to be enough? Are they going to try and defend it? There's the inhib going down. EG should just back away from this one, but instead they're gone the aggression route and I'm not sure that's the right rope to take. Once that inhibitor's gone, they just back away from it. So I was putting a big burst of damage down on Crepo and Fnatic realized, so what are we doing? We've already taken the inhib. <laughs> well, that shell still is cracked right now and that means the rest of it's going to crumble if Fnatic can just wait the rest of this out. That super, uh, super minion wave push up. They have an actually really good position right now. They could go for an engage. They can wall them out completely. 
but just not confident in that just yet. They don't want to go up against a Baron Fnatic, which is honestly in the end a smart play. But that middle turret, look at the middle inhibitor turret. It's down to like 200 health right now, and it will be taken from one auto attack out of Xpeke with his Lich Pain up, or even Soaz with two hits. Soaz goes in, that's one shuriken down. One more will do it. And I can see Peke, oh, we thought he'd actually thrown out the card there, came in, but cancelled, they've done it again, so has just done it as well. It's like before the animation comes out there, just making sure he avoids the damage. This time it will go down, and now means Fnatic are on towards the middle, exposed inhibitor. Ah, Evil Genius is going to fight for this one? No, it is going to go down as well. And honestly, like you said, you know, the fact that the Baron is on Fnatic, it's a close fight as it is, they can't afford to do this one. This one they have to defend. Exactly, this is the point where it's do or die. You have to fight on this inhibitor turret, or if you lose it, the chances of coming back from losing three inhibitors is it's, it's too low it's way too low if you want to ha have hopes of winning this game but you get a pull into and raided and eg they're gonna keep pushing this wave out as much as possible though frog and he's gonna run out of mono eventually as they do get the wall off on his peke they do but again they oh manage to get away from that one and frog and he's just deleted from the map there yellow so yellow pete trying to do what he can crap and blows out of the box but monsoon just blows wicked back into the wall throws him away from that one and look at the damage they're doing out there and then what oh the shield came out but pete finally does manage to get on towards peke immediately slides in cyanide gets on towards him the slow on yellow pete the interrupt that's a triple kill can he get the quadra down on towards him crapo goes down it's Soas that picks up the kill. It's surely going to be Fnatic that will round out the match here. They have to back away because they've gotten simply no minions, but it's only a matter of time before they push him in there. Absolute tremendous play from Fnatic here. Ginormous gold advantages, and well, they just played and executed the perfect split strategy. Once again, you cannot allow Peke to have Twisted Fate. Exactly. You can't allow Frog. Well, I mean, obviously they were able to allow Frog to have an Nivea this time, but this is considering that Fnatic was behind the beginning of the game. They were down quite a bit, and they just snowballed like one or two fights and took the game from that. And Fnatic, they deserve that victory. Now they're four and three, if I'm not mistaken, in the standings. And honestly, they're they're still looking like a top team, even though they have that uh, that ranking. Absolutely fantastic stuff. So that takes Fnatic to four and three, like you say. Stretches them, gets them a little bit closer to Gambit. Of course, they're going to be playing shortly. But wow, what a game from Fnatic. Evil Genius is kind of a little bit shell-shocked off that one. They got a few of the champions they wanted, but not quite all of them. And it was all about those ganks, all about the early kills, and all about the mobility of the team. Cannon of Soaz just rocking that lane completely, dominating it way ahead in terms of CS. The moment Peke goes down and helps them out, they just managed to pick up kill after kill and just whip, zipped around the map, taking down the turrets. And if you think back, it was simply every time they pushed a lane, they gained an advantage. You saw Peke die in the bottom lane, Tao went to the top lane, and that was really the story of the game. Well, I really hope, though, that over the analysis test, Joe and Trevor can break it down for us. So let's head over there and see what they have to say. Thanks a lot, guys, and Trevor, an amazing game there. And let's start from the very beginning. It's a very good place to start, <laughs> I once heard. Um, but it all kicked off with that questionable play actually coming out of Fnatic, which was there was a ward in the tribal. Yeah, they, they put a pink ward down, and they were so determined to kill it that they died. So the call came in. They were like, okay, look, Jarvan's coming to support. We can, we can pick this fight. We know Nautilus is there. So they, they went into their last auto attack on the ward got double hooks onto Yellowstar's Draven. And the 3v2, because they just got jumped on first, they died so quickly. And, you know, we were looking at going, okay, fair enough, we get it. You, you want to pick a fight, you want to have the jungle support. But Sino was not close enough to make that play happen. No, and that was, and that was the miscalculation at the start. And uh, it was funny because I was on Twitter and I asked people who you think is going to win this. And I said, does that swing it? And then when we got to 11 minutes into the game, we had a big team fight around about uh, the dragon, just to the top side of the dragon. Yeah, so we ended up trading three for one at the end of the engagement, and so many Fnatic members actually went very, very low, but they were able to, you know, sort of uh, run around the outskirts of Evil Geniuses and put the damage down where they needed to, pick up the kills where they needed, and get away safely. That was one of the key things. And it wasn't the only time we've seen it. No, and it was just two minutes later where we thought almost that we were watching a replay of the fight before. That's how close it was in positioning uh, and in what happened at the start of it. That one was a little bit different in the outcome, though. And this is where I wrote on Twitter again, does that swing <laughs> you again? And it was basically, in this particular fight, literally two minutes later when they went back to the Dragon, Evil Geniuses were out positioned. Wicked was down on the right-hand side, a couple guys up at top. He was forced to use his slingshot to get to safety. And then e uh, Fnatic just pretty much rolled over. What actually happened is as um, Wicked was getting to safety, a wild card, the left-hand one from Beckett, just caught him off screen, <laughs> forced him into his passive. They then dove on him under the tower. Damage from that then led Froggen into his passive. They dove him under the tower, and it was just Fnatic literally steamrolling forward.
Yeah, and that brought Draven from, I think, 0-1-1 zero zero one, one. One, uh, right up to 4-1-1 one, one yeah. at that point. And obviously went even further on into the game than that. Uh, and then we kind of got what we expected from Fnatic, which was XPK playing Twisted Fate, putting the pressure down wherever he possibly could. And that actually leads us to our replay half an hour into the game. Yeah, so let's actually jump into the replay right now. Fnatic are 14 10 up as far as kills are concerned. In gold, it is 10,000. Now, this whole play starts with Soez being caught in the mid lane, but I definitely want to highlight the positioning of Peke. He's down here in the bottom lane alone. So we're going to run this replay at full speed. And, you know, one of the things uh, we were briefly talking to RNA about and saying, how do you handle this? What is the decision making? Because Evil Geniuses, they got the kill advantage. You'll notice Froggen immediately starts to recall to deal with Peke, who gets onto the tower. While he's focusing down that tower, the rest of Evil Geniuses try to stack up on this inhib. And RNA was pretty much saying that Basically, when you've got this position, you'll have to run backwards because once that destiny begins to get channeled, Peck is literally just going to, you know, jump into the fight. He's going to come and join this, you know, four-man party, make it a five versus four. And if you don't have a very, very quick kill under your belt of your evil geniuses, you basically just get, you know, eaten from behind because you're out damaged, out positioned, and you just don't have the numbers to pick it up. So it was a brave call from EG. Maybe in the heat of the moment, in the heat of the game, playing from behind, they needed to have been more defensive. And there's that question that comes up almost every time we see a player on his standout champion, uh, which of course in this case was Twisted Fate for XPK. And uh, we have this discussion a little bit uh, earlier on, also yesterday, of you know with League of Legends and the you know the amount of champions that we have right now that are so highly contested a lot of teams are you know especially as a as a red team here letting a few more through because you get the first yep. two choices from that twisted fate was obviously left up there and it seems to be a bad decision to not ban that Twisted Fate against Fnatic. Yeah, it's a very difficult one, especially when you know just how good uh, Peke is with that champion. I'm looking at the bans. Elise was banned out by Evil Geniuses, and the reason I was double-checking that, if Wicked had been able to play an Elise against the likes of that Kanan, he would have had a little bit more of an easier time, would have been a bit more mobile. And one of the things about the picks, Frog and Anivia, he's 0 for 2 in the summer split. Frog and Lux, 0 for 2 in the summer split. Those are THE Frog and Champions. Yeah but they're just not enough right now. And the funny thing is, I was talking to Wicked earlier on this morning, actually, when we uh, were just about to get the shuttle here to the event, and I said to him about this game against Fnatic and about Soaz as Elise and how incredible it was yesterday, and he said to me, yeah, I think it deserves a ban, to be honest. I mean, yeah. for him, that's easy to say because yeah. he's the guy that has to probably deal with the complete terror that is that Elise that comes out from, uh, uh, from Soaz. But now they took that one out of there, and so as once again, you know, he plays that Ken and finished seven, four, six in the end. But you know, that's not really a, a massive standout scoreline or anything. But the way that he played it and the chances that he took there were incredible once again. So as proving that you can, you can't really ban him out of the game. Well, if we're going to be a hundred percent honest about the fanatic play style, talking about so as he was actually caught once or twice. Uh, in rated was caught once or twice during sure. the mid game from that like thirteen minutes where they they, they built up that massive gold lead. Uh, Yellow Soul was off AFK farming. He was in one of the solo lanes. He, was, he had no support with him. And the rest of Fnatic were caught out from time to time. And it gave up a few more kills. If they'd actually grouped up and maybe pushed, they maybe could have done more damage. But they dragged the game out. I think, I think they felt they had the map advantage. And even if they did give up a few kills here or there, it's not the end of the world. But even Fnatic, who were flawless at split pushing, still making mistakes. And the key is just to find out how do you exploit that? How do you convert that kill on the support into a tower, which is something EG couldn't do. And that is a process as well that, you know, you can win a game like this as Fnatic have done, but still realize, yeah. that, you know, they'll probably not go back to that and look at it in terms of what they've done well, but in terms of what they've done yeah. badly, even though that they won that game. So this little thing here and there, they'll say, yellow star, look at your positioning right there. Shouldn't be doing that. You're too yeah. far away. Watch out for that. And the same, in, you know, for other champions, uh, for other players, I should say, uh, in different positions. So it is a a bit of a learning process to go forward with uh, who you're really going to uh, or what area you target yeah. to uh, really improve on there but Fnatic again showing that when they have a plan when they're you know in the right frame of mind it seems they can beat anyone on any given day yeah it's the, the best way to describe it and I'm very happy to see Yellowstar playing Draven it's it's a champion that I would not have associated with Yellowstar it's just it's a very 
difficult and complex champion to pull off, and he did it perfectly. I mean, he finished that matchup 10 to 5, and he went the full IE Bloodthirster build, and we're saying how how much of a difference there'll be between him and Ezreal, who's going that blue blue build and trying to play the kite game, and it just simply, he just got out DPS completely. Well, that brings us on perfectly on the topic of Yellowstar. We're going to head over to the stage where Shox is waiting with the man himself.